Hey, Dave here. Today we're going to talk about the Chilean UAP FLIR video. In this video, we'll discuss what type of airborne FLIR system is used to record this. We'll discuss the acquisition of the target with the infrared camera. We'll also discuss the acquisition of the target with the EO camera, also known as a daylight camera. And we'll discuss the differences between infrared cameras and daylight cameras. I'll take a small dive into the supposed contrails that this particular UAP leaves. And as always, we'll have some comparison videos and I'll discuss some theories that I have about this particular UAP. At first, we don't see a heat signature, and then we do. So what's up with that? It's fairly common to not see thermal signatures without increasing magnification. I have seen faint plus sign anomalies around thermal signatures before with the Westcam models. To be honest, I'm not really a big fan of EO continuous zoom optics. There's also problems with the zoom, the focus, and the concentricity with these block cameras. I think the best use for these type of cameras is to view lasers outside of our visible spectrum and for near range targets. So typically a FLIR operator is going to have his camera slaved meaning they're going to be at the same zoom level on each one. So if you zoom in with the infrared, the electro optics is going to match it. Zoom in again, it's going to match it again. Um, this particular operator did not have them slaved. So in this case, he was zooming in on the infrared and the electro optics was still at a wide field of view. So you were not able to acquire the same as you could up here. Uh, that's just operator preference. I don't know why they did that. Don't know. It's important to remember that with EO optics, things are seen in terms of light. And IR optics, things are seen in terms of heat. Now there is some overlap in what's seen on the video, but it's critical to remember the difference between the two. So what's up with these two contrails, and why are they segmented? What is up with the burst of heat, and why are these so-called contrails not consistent like I normally see? If this was some type of aircraft, I would have to say it's some kind of compressor stall.
So, what was the Chilean UAP? The answer is, I don't know. It sure looked like a jet to begin with, especially with the contrails and maybe the compressor stall. Um, I don't really have any explanation for it because a lot of people have said that it's been like 30 to 90 nautical miles away from the position shown on the aircraft data. So I don't know what to tell you there. The one thing that I can contribute with these FLIR comparison videos is that the object was not 30 to 90 nautical miles away because it would not be shown that far. It's beyond the capabilities of the infrared detector. You simply can't see a jet engine, even a big jet engine, from Jacksonville to Daytona with a FLIR camera. It's just not possible. It's beyond the capabilities of the detector. I'm sorry I don't have a conclusion for you at this time, but it is what it is. Until next time, thanks for watching.